Welcome back, everybody. You know what time it is. Another Two Tamers Talk. My yes. guy. Happy yeah. uh, 4th of July. Day Happy 4th after, of July. Days after. Hope yeah. everyone had a nice, safe weekend. Hope everybody had a good time with their family. Uh, for those of you not in the U.S., you know, 4th of July is where we celebrate how uh, kick-ass our country is, I guess. So uh, <laughs> <laughs> hope everyone had a good, you know, how much 4th like to blow of July up? if it wasn't a holiday for you. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, it was fun. We got to hang out a little bit. Talk we did. Digi. Yeah. We did. It, it was, was a good fun. time. We got to, got, to, got to hang out and stuff for sure. So... No, and uh, I really want to appreciate everyone who watched last week's episode. Last week's episode was great. We had an awesome guest, Basil, doing yeah. an interview series. Interview turned out great. We were very excited to do that for our little segment for our podcast. We thought it was a great fit in. And let us know in the comments if you've seen anybody else on the channel that you're like, I want to do an uh, interview with that guy or whatever. Yeah. Um, we definitely want to do more of that for sure. So we were, we were a big fan of that. Um, yeah, it was, it was a blast. I mean, in doing that, too, it just means we have so much stuff to talk about because we're a week behind on news. Seriously. Well, it's kind of nice, too, because yeah. now we have all of the alt arts for BT14. That is true. We don't just have, like, one alt art to talk about or three alt arts or, mm -hmm. or we, you know, we talk about two. And then the Thursday night before we upload, another one comes out that's way cooler than the ones we talked about or whatever. So I, I'm kind of liking how this time with the alt arts, we waited till they all came out to mm -hmm. put together our favorites. And talk about yeah. them and share them with you. Yeah, we definitely uh, we got some we got some differing opinions, but we I do. I got we some do. Fun. Yeah. yeah, yeah, yeah. All right. Well, do you want to jump into the alt arts first? I would love to. That's a great okay. place to start. Let's talk about alt arts for BT14, and then okay. you know we're gonna dive into some EX5 stuff. We're gonna talk yeah. about some uh, crazy new keywords coming up even next set. We're gonna have a blast today. Yeah. So. What are, what are, what's where do you want to start? Do you want to start? Let's, let's, let's just go through, right? Let's go okay. through in the order that you sent me these things. We can just go through talking about them, or we can. I mean, did you want to talk about every alt art, or you want to just pick a couple? You know, let's just go through them quick. Let's go through them. Yeah. All right, yeah. let's start with this TK. Look at so, this cool TK. <laughs> you you like that art style? I'm I'm not opposed to it. I think the texture is going to make it look great. I think it's going to yeah. be one of those that looks way better. It reminds me of like the BT12 where the, that's looks exactly like the side what shot, I'm thinking. you know, and you're just kind of like, uh, and then we yeah. have the texture and I'm still kind of uh, on those cards. I really don't yeah. think that, well, yeah. as far as alt art tamers go, I don't think that they're, and I, I think the texture on these is probably going to be nice, like you said, but the art style is still pretty, it's pretty generic for me for an alt art. Yeah. This seems yeah. like what the regular art should be for the card, I think. Yeah. Like, like yeah, I, I get that. I get that. I mean, and all I'm, the tamers are this style. Through this isn't set. my favorite. Yeah. I'll be sure to point out what my favorites are for this set, yeah. but TK is cool. Powerful card. I mean, it's nice as it has an alt art and yeah. Then, what about uh, your, uh, where, are you, where are you going next? I got Gomamon next. That's what you got buddy. next, too? Yeah, that's my buddy. I'm, I'm excited. This, I think this is my favorite altar. This is your favorite altar so far of 14? Yeah, I think so. Because okay, I think the texture okay. on this is going to be great. Like, look, you finally get a close-up of all the marching fishes. I'm so happy about this. You know, I love Gomamon. Yep. I, I was a huge Gomamon fan of Season 1. Uh, I love the whole Zudumon. Again, not a fan of Vikemon as much as Zudumon, but hey, yeah. whatever. Neither here or there. But the the card looks great. I bet you the texture is going to be fantastic. I bet so too. And it's kind of nice. We get a little spotlight of Dolphmon on the background. Like you know, we need. We haven't had a Dolphmon since BT one. Is there that how long it's BT one level four and blue Dolphmon? I think it's like plus one thousand if your opponent has no source. Oh, gotcha. So it's like you never even used it in BT one. But I wouldn't, you know, it's a Dolphmon's a solid design. I'm we excited for the that. texture on this card because I think it's either going to be based off, it's going to be like focused on the water behind him or yep. it's going to be based off that sun right behind Dolphmon. And like kind of like sheaming off. Yeah, I think it's going to be really good. This could definitely be in contention for best texture of this set for sure. Yeah. It's my daughter's favorite card. Daughter's got good taste. <laughs> Uh, I got Commandermon next. Commander, I don't, but I'll go there. Okay, go I'm Commander. excited about this. I love this Commandermon. Yeah. I love this like lighting and this like color of whatever yeah. they're doing this like cyberpunk like neon gamer lighting going on yeah. with all of these cards so it's it's really cool i'm excited for this card i think the texture is going to be good too and i think it it makes sense with all of the arts that we have for commander mon that you have another alt art because yeah. you're already going to have a pretty field with all these commander mons going at it so especially once they gave us that was it like the memorial pack Alt art or what? Yeah. No, it was in BT ten or whatever. It was whatever. Yeah, yeah. It yeah, was yeah, a yeah. randomly loaded one, but yeah, it was really cool. So 
it'll be really cool for D Brigade players, especially considering, you know, they get more support in BT14, yeah. obviously, to be able to just have like a fully stacked full art line of Commander Mons yeah. on the field. Since and that's I'm kind curious of what the deck too, does. with BT15 starting to come out, or EX5 starting EX5, to come out too, yeah. both of these sets that we're going to be getting reveals for eventually, if we're going to get more Digi Police stuff. Mm-hmm. And with all the other Digi Police, like the Tamer looks really nice. Yeah, they're loading it the, up. They're really loading up the yeah. Tamer for sure. Um, you're gonna use that in that too. I can't imagine, you know. Yeah. So it's gonna be, it's gonna be nice to have two different archetypes supported by one alt art. Yeah. I like it when games do that. When this game does that. I mean, we can just go. I mean, we got the Brigadermon too. Like that's the level six, right? This is so cool to me. Yeah. I am a huge fan of this boy. Like he is awesome. The alt art does such a good job showcasing him. I think the texture is going to be crazy because it looks like they're going to have that like night sky kind of. Um, it's going to be curious for sure, but I'm I'm excited for this. Well, this I think it's one of my too favorites. because I'm pretty sure. I mean, just looking at the art style, yeah. I got I have to believe that this is the same artist that did the Dark Dramon alt art. It, that's exactly what I was it, thinking. It, it looks really similar, so I think it it's really cool yeah. that Digimon's just like he, they kind of like assign. Uh, Digivolution lines to certain yeah. artists, you know, so you can stay consistent. Well, with I think the that artwork. makes sense, right? Like, if you're playing a deck, and even if you like or don't like the artist, and you know your art's jumping and jumping and jumping and jumping, not that it's going to affect the way you play the game, yeah, but it just makes it more aesthetically pleasing. Absolutely. I you mean, know, if you look at yeah. like Greymon stuff, like how we got all that new Koki stuff in, in the <laughs> X4. Uh, yeah. it, it does kind of throw things off a little bit. Like when you're trying to yeah. build like a crazy cool, like if your art style, your preferred art style is like this it's not gritty machine, like yeah. high detailed stuff. And all of a sudden you have this really soft illustrated cards and you're like, like the pastels. Well, it's a good card, but give me an, all. you know, it's kind of what yeah. we went through with the X one where everyone was just like, yeah, these are good cards, but we don't. Well, it's nice we don't because like I just saw something where they're doing a lady dev reprint from EX two mm-hmm. or EX one. I mean, and like we got a lot of EX1 repaints or repaints, re, like alternate arts later on. Mm-hmm. So if they keep doing that again, that's going to be awesome. Kind of, you know, weighing that art style out for sure. Yeah. But, but I I'm like the consistency with D Brigade. It makes me, it too. makes me want to play the deck. It, I mean, yeah, it rewards you. It's like when yeah. you have that full force of it's, it's great. Where do we go from here? Is there, oh, well, we have the metal gray, the ace. Ace, okay. That's my, like, that was, it was contention between the Gomamon and this. This is, yeah. so we're on the same page then, because yeah. I think this is my favorite uh, alt art of the set. I'm trying to find it. I don't know why it's not populating right here on my pictures. It's really good, though. It's got, it's got the... Oh, I love this. I absolutely, it does such yeah. a good job of showing off what Metal Gray is. I mean, the detail on the teeth. Because, mm-hmm. like, normally when you see a Metal Gray art, you just see kind of, like, his helmet mm-hmm. that he's got with, like, that metal armor. And then this shows it all off. He's got the missiles in such a sick way. Like, the fact that the gray at the bottom goes, like, underneath where the ace is, but then it has that red border. Yeah. It is so sick, man. Yeah. I love this card. This is going to be one of my favorite cards in the game, period. And Absolutely. not to mention the texture is going to be fantastic. It has oh, to you be. know it. You know it's going to be crazy. And it's going to be edge-to-edge texture, which yeah. is really cool. Yeah, I, like, I really like what they did. Because, remember, we had, we had some people on the channel that were kind of questionable about the ace artwork yeah like and comments, i didn't think not, it was bad i, I, I liked so. it right right but everyone's kind of questioning like do they go hard in the paint with that border for the alt arts and they're like, like no we just got rid do? of it essentially yeah. but i do like that they Make keep it, it kind of a little bit on the bottom so you know it's an ace card especially because it's going to be an inheritable so that's going to be your stack right yeah so, i think we absolutely. only got a couple left that we were going to talk about and they're just both the secrets right no, we got to talk about Hyde Commander Mon. I'm sorry. I oh, gotta, yeah, yeah. You can't skip over my boy because this might be my favorite alt art if it wasn't for that Metal Gray. Okay. Because I love this design and I'm a huge fan of this and I cannot wait to see the colors. And that was it's so vibrant. That's a level five? It's level four. Four. Level four, Hyde Commander Mon. Follows that Grey Mon appeal that has been going on with this whole aesthetic or whatever. And I just have a feeling like the neon lights, the pink, the blue, the green are just going to pop. Pop right off. When you yeah. see it in person and then you got this little army of Digi Police, like, oh, I cannot wait. I cannot wait. Okay, now we're uh, going to do the secrets. Now we can do the secrets. <laughs> I Sorry. love, well, let's just start with the War Grey. Because, I mean, he's doing the Gaia Force, right? You know what this, you know what this Ricard reminds me of? What? The, um, what is it? Evo Cup? Ultimate Cup? War Grey? That you have? Oh, yeah, yeah. The yeah, I it's, mean, he's just kind of chilling yeah, in that it's, one. Yeah, it's a very nice where it shows the full art. Mm-hmm. He's jacked. Look at those guns. Um, <laughs> it's, I can't imagine this card not being good. Yeah. With the texture, the color, it does the whole a lot thing. Too. It does a lot. It does yeah. great. It shows off what Wargrave does best. It's just Gaia Force. 
Terraforce, whatever whatever translation you grew up with. Yeah. And you know the texture is like with that huge fireball at the top. Right? Oh, yeah. It's going to look really cool. Oh, yeah. It's, it's gonna just going to pop right down. It's going to be sick. It's, what a good card. What a good artwork. They they nailed that. And now for my favorite one of the two, I, I think the Angemon. I, I really, really like this. Because it's got that eight pack. Yeah. <laughs> That's totally one. <laughs> no, I like this art style because um, it's really going to show kind of an evolution of the art because this yeah. is the same artist that did the Lusamon in BT4. Yeah. But they're going to be able to, like, imagine if that Lusamon had texture. Oh, man. You know, oh, man. and we're going to get to see that. You know, so it's going to be really cool to see them kind of, like, once again, associate kind of an angel line with a certain artist. It'll be really cool to see Absolutely. How, they, yeah. how that, like, comes through with texture on it, too. Like, it's going to be crazy. This An this Angemon card is just good in general. Yeah. Like, it's going to be killer for the deck, and I think it's going to be a mandatory four of, if I'm not mistaken. Oh, so. Like yeah. in Because it supports itself. Like, being Adam able to yeah. recur it. Yeah, for Yeah, sure. so I think it's going to be, like, a mandatory four of. So, of course, you're going to want, like, plain art for it. Yeah. Such a good card. Such a good card. Might be one of the best level four alt arts we have, period. Probably. I mean, there's not a whole ton. Not a lot. Not a lot. Well, that's it for BT14 uh, alt arts. We do have some more alt arts that got revealed. Yeah. So we all of a sudden had this random uh, limited pack that yes. dropped on us. So forgive us. We didn't do our homework and watch the Bandai live stream and yeah. where they explained it or whatever. So let us know in the comments why we need to watch it. But now we're having a new limited pack that is going to have some reprints or some. I don't know some, if they're uh, reprints. All, all they're just new cards. Excuse me. Yeah. yeah, and new cards. So tons yeah. of new cards. Yeah. So the LM stuff is all new cards, but there's uh, I think there's a it's either a box topper or somehow these come in that. Yeah. Um, but it's so far they they gave us six cards. Um, and they're for all from different sets, but yeah. they're all like ten plus. Which is but nice I, because I know I think we that's have relevant right? yeah to what. The game is doing right now. Yeah. So I know the first one that I saw right off the bat was that Sunflamon. I mean, the artwork's killer on it's that. It's really cool. So. Like, like Bloom Lord didn't really have a lot of alt arts for the deck. It's true. You know, and it's time yeah. to give them some pieces like that, especially because you're going to use the Sunflamon for so long. Yeah. Give it to them. Sunflow, and I think probably Cherrymon's the next on the list, right? As far as what they want. Well, knowing Bandai, they'll give it Blossomon because it's restricted. Because <laughs> it's restricted. Yeah. They've been planning it so far ahead, and they're like, wait a second, we restricted this. Yeah. Uh, what else do we got? There's the gray, the geo gray. I do like the geo gray art. I think that's yeah. pretty cool. It's pretty cool. What Digimon? What's that green Digimon? Tuskmon. Above him? Tuskmon. See, I would Which never is cool know. because we haven't had a lot of Tuskmon representation, and he's kind of one of the like, original villains or original uh, characters you fight with in some of the early Digimon games, and it'd be nice to have a little bit more distinction with him, but... Well, he's earned him spot, earned a spot in the background. He has so earned a the spot card. getting tossed. Congratulations. Yeah. Uh, but my boy, this BT11 Vidramon, like the mandatory oh, four yeah. of Vidramon oh, yeah. in so the good. old Forest deck. It's so oh. good. Like, of oh, course. Yeah. I'm so glad they gave it to you. I can't wait. It makes so Hitmon much sense. in the background. Oh, it looks so cool. But why did they put Imon in the background? You I don't me, understand. I don't boy. understand this reference. So if someone knows the reference why Imon is in the background on this Vidramon, let me know. Because not that the art is bad or anything, but come on, man. Vidramon, or Imon's got all of its own things. Keep them separate. <laughs> You know, let's let Vidramon have the spotlight, you know. And then we have the new Agunimon from BT12. Yeah, the new right? Agunimon's pretty cool, too. That's pretty good. And then, what else? Oh, there's the f uh, the level four from the Fenrilong. But that's a BT14 alt art, mm -hmm. right? So Yeah. Yeah, so they're going all the way from 10 to 14 because you're also going to get the... Oh, that doesn't come in BT14 in general. Is that no, what No, these saying? are the alt arts from... I had no idea. I thought, okay. Yeah. So I think that's what you were talking about with that, the BT-14 uh, High Commander Mon. Oh, that's, a box that's stopper, why it's out of order. In the LM set, I think. I there was so much thrown at us this week as far as all these uh, alt arts go and stuff. You're right, it is. Because well, no, one thing I'm noticing is on our images, the star that indicates if it's an alt art mm -hmm. is in on the BT-14 alt arts. Yes, but not on, but the, not on the LM. Box stopper right, stuff. right. Yeah. So um, that makes sense why it's out of order like this. Yeah. Okay, so well then that makes it easy. BT14, my favorite alt art is the metal gray. Well, there you go. And then the out of this pack of six, the high commander mon's the one I want. There you go. So I like it. Let's go. <laughs> All right, man. Well, where are we going from here? We are going wherever we want to go. Or we could have some fun. We could take some time to talk about a new keyword. 
Which one? Oh, the one we're about to get or the one they both they just revealed? Let's okay. talk about barriers. So, Barrier. okay. Guys, for those of you who've been living under rock, for those of you that are just obsessed with EX4 and need more and more time to play with Grey Knights Mon and uh, what else is really bad in EX4? Um, just kidding. Oh, but, yeah. uh, <laughs> um, actually, why, why don't we take a little sec and talk about EX4? I don't want to get, I, I want to enjoy the moment for a sec. Okay. What have you been thinking about EX4? I want to backtrack a little bit. Okay. I, we were so excited thinking about the future. But you know what? EX4 is a set that we all spent money on, and we all want to talk about what we think of the set, what we like about the set, what we don't like about the set, what we wish we had more of. Enlighten us. I mean, okay. We've both, we've both been through this with sets, mm -hmm. right? I think you're, you went through this with BTE10, okay. where you just hit a set, and it doesn't really do anything for the decks that you like to play. Yeah. Yeah, yeah, yeah. You know, and I feel like that's kind of where I'm at with the X4. And I know, like, a lot of people are really excited. A lot of people are having fun with it. And so I'm really encouraging that because I really... Yeah. It just... None of these cards fit the decks that I play. I thought you wanted to build the Alter S deck. Though. I know, but then Jacob just, did, and it was so... He, but he, you should he, still build it, too. I know, but it's just not my style. <laughs> like, I started <laughs> playing thing. with it. I did start putting together a list. Yeah, I started looking I at lists. I kind of realized it just, wasn't for you or something. It's... It's not my list. It's not, you know, gotcha. but gotcha. the good thing is, is the BT-13 is right around the corner. Yeah. And I already started ordering my alt arts for decks that I'm going to That are play. getting updated. Yeah, absolutely. I'm going to try and build. You're all in on BT-13. I'm all in on Royal Knights. And yeah. either the combo with the Yggdrasil or, you know, I'm going to do a lot of, like, I'm going to build Alphamon, Jessmon. Um, all Force doesn't really change that much, I don't think. Um, but there's there's good pieces for a lot of the Royal Knights uh, in that set, obviously. That's what it's for. But EX4, um, I mean, you had an event at your yeah. place. You uh, you hosted. Yes, yeah, so no. So shout out to every single that person. I can't wait to talk about this, so I'm super excited about this. Um, shout out to everybody that came. We had an outstanding turnout. We, uh, we had 19 people. There was a, a ride situation with that 19th person, and because it was going to create a buy, I was like, okay, well, I'll drop you. You know, instead of setting you up in round one. Um, but you actually got stuck at work, so you would have been 20. I did. Jacob was in Vegas with his girl for the weekend, so that would have been 21. And there was like two or three other people that had to work, a shift they couldn't get off, a new baby. Congrats to you, uh, my man, on the new baby. I'm excited about that. Glad you're taking the uh, doing the right thing and focusing on your kid and your family instead of playing Digimon. But the um, <laughs> point is, we would have had 24. We could have had yeah. 24, right? Filled my entire house. It was awesome. My wife was out of town for the uh, for the day. Everybody was super respectful. You guys treated my house very nicely. Not a single complaint from any of you. So I want to thank everybody who came to that first. And it was just a blast. We everybody had fun. Huge event. But we all played EX4. Okay. And so we had a blast playing EX4. And it was nice because. Um, what I like to do is, with all the bulk that we get, is I'm all about kind of funneling it back into that community. Mm -hmm. Get those decks that they want to build or whatever going. And uh, so, you know, right before the event, some people came by, dug through EX4 boxes, uh, built their Alliance decks, built uh, updated Blue Flare, whatever they wanted to do, and got some stuff going. It was really nice. Um, I do actually have the results for that. I'm going to talk about that for 30 seconds. I'll talk about the top five. Normally we talk about the top three, but we got to talk about top five. Okay. You got deck? I do have the decks. I'm in the wrong thread on Discord. I don't know how to use Discord, guys. Forgive me. Okay, here we go. Okay. So, top five for the event at my place, which it was competitive, man. Was it? Was it gritty? It was, it was not, like, sweaty. It yeah. were, I mean, it wasn't um, casual. It, it wasn't casual. Everybody brought their A game. Everybody was trying. We Red hybrids, uh, blue flare. We had, um, uh, what's the other strong decks? Three or four war gray lists. Like, it was strong. So, um, first place went to Purple Merva. Okay. Crazy, crazy cool Purple Merva list that I can't spoil because we're about to film it. Oh, we are going to get that We're going to yep. film it, and we're going to have it on the deck channel here very soon. Crazy cool list. Um, second place, uh, our boy with red hybrids. Um, not our usual red player, but one of our other friends came, and it was great. I think I've met him before, but I'm, like, so horrible with names. So like yeah. I had to go up to him and be like, hey man, I'm really sorry. I know I've met you before, <laughs> but I just crashed with names. So uh it was great. I had a blast playing with him. Um we had Raid War Gray go third, and then uh Blue Flare went fourth. And fifth, 
was me. Oh, there you go. With Ravemon. With your purple bird. With Ravemon. So it was great because Ravemon was one of those decks, and I have had this same situation happen with purple stack decks that I have been building since BT7. Okay. For whenever BT8. We'll say, we'll say EX... EX1, we'll say EX1 actually, because it started with Venom Iotis Mon. Okay. You could almost argue BT5 with Tactimon too, but let's just keep it consistent at this point. No one wants to talk about Tactimon. I love Tactimon. <laughs> I love BT5 Tactimon. Anyways, so what would happen was I would spend all this time and energy trying to build the best version of a purple stack deck. And it would get me middle of the road pairings, top 10, yeah. eighth place, uh, 12th place, round there with a purple stack deck and it was like okay cool i did all the combos i built the deck as best as i think i could you know obviously a lot of these were before merva was out um so you couldn't do a lot of those cool things um you know to pair that as a secondary six or whatever but ravemon man ravemon works way better than i thought you know and first of all thank you to everybody watching the ravemon list uh we're almost there i think we're at we're at the time of recording, almost 800 views, so we're going to beat Phoenix Mon if we keep it going. So, you know, load up all your t phones, tablets, computers. Let's just auto-play the crap out of this video and have it be Phoenix Mon. <laughs> um, share with all your friends and stuff. But I love the Ravemon deck. It makes a lot of sense. It works really well. I'm really happy with my ratios. And I did test it a bunch before I recorded the video. So yeah, I, I, was I played you, that did, version. Did you catch people off guard I, with it? I, ca with, I caught so many people of, off guard. Yeah. So... I, I feel really good about the testing I did before we shot the video. Shot the video. Video's doing great. Play the same exact deck at the um, at the event at my place, and I played against the second place player. I played against the fourth place player. Those are my two losses of the night. We did five rounds. Oh, okay. My two losses were against the top five players, right? You know what I'm saying? So like, I had solid, solid games. Super crazy cool turns. Ravemon did so much, the hand disruption, the security adding to hand, Merva popping off, the retaliation, the shine gray ruin mode. Oh my God. Yeah. So strong. The whole deck just absolutely did crazy. I'm not saying that Ravemon is going to be the top tier deck, yeah. you know, but it's doing way better than I expected. I kind of yeah. thought it was one of those, oh, but it's another Jeff casual purple stack deck, yeah. you know, that's going to get middle place or middle of the round or middle, whatever, go two and two or one and three or something like that. But no, it did great. So sorry to talk about myself so much for going fifth when it's not that big of a deal, you know, but I was just so excited about the Ravemon and if you haven't seen the Ravemon list, go check it out. I did make one change because we had some awesome people remind me in the comments, the egg counts as a bird. Yeah. Normally I don't think there's been a single deck ever that I've played that counts the eggs traits. So this yeah. is new to me, so I'm pretty excited. Um, so I actually ended up swapping one of my Savior Mons for one more Devi Mon. Oh, okay. And uh, some people commented asking why I don't play Devi Drummon as mm -hmm. a level four. It's a great level four. Gaining that one memory is nice, but the deck already does so much. It has the room is so tight. One more memory is not going to make or break the deck. So I'm very happy with my list. Um, I'm not going to do an update video till next set. And things that's are what gonna I was going to ask you is, what do you think? How are you going to find room for As of them? right now, the only thing that changes before BT13 is I'm swapping one Saber Dramon for one Devimon. You know, it doesn't make sense to play three Saber Dramons if my egg is a, I mean, uh, the next is a bird, right? The next set. But the next set, like you were asking, I have no idea. <laughs> so you get, a, you get new everything. If I go the tribal route where I'm playing the new Ravemon level six and I'm playing Ravemon burst mode, which I think I have to. You have to. That I've been talking so about good. it for a year yeah. now at this point, right? Um, so much of the deck changes. Merva comes out, new Ravemon goes in. Shangri Ruin comes out, Ravemon Burst Mode. Ignite comes out, probably. The new Falcomon Falco, comes yeah. in. Saber Dramon comes out. When we get the promo ra Raid Rush, Retaliation, you whatever. So many birds that in your comes stack. in, right? But I yeah. think the Devimon's going to stay. I think a lot of the core pieces are going to stay. And this is the part that I'm almost torn on. Because in the video, I specifically talked about, and I think a lot of people liked it and, and they commented on it in the video, um, was the Vajramon, the two cost Evo. Yeah, the, the turbo. It does yeah. so much work. So many people were thrown off guard. It's almost like they had never seen a turbo level five at the house event that I had where I could just crack a boost with my memory setter, go to five, or do it, you know, did you evolve into the five first, whatever order I did it in, and get to Raven on that turn. People didn't think I could do it in one turn. Yeah. Because of the fact that I had the boost, because I had turbo level fives, almost want to play turbo level fours, but I really don't have the room, and I don't think it's that needed, right? 
I don't know how I'm going to fit in the new Chromon. That's how I feel about Jessmon because it's, I play the. How do you get to fit that I, in? I play the Lava Garitamon. Yeah, so you know exactly what I'm talking about. You Absolutely. have the exact. That's the exact same stat line too. It's the same thing, so and like, I got to find room yep. for all the new Savior Huckmons. So do you go the tribal route, or do you go with the most powerful inheritables and effects, where you take out the turbo, or do you? What are you thinking? The Savior's too strong, because it digivolves. It goes with all the new pieces that That's, go into yep. the Jessmon. So it makes sense to take out the Lava, but. You still got to leave room for the chimeras because the chimeras are pretty much your win con. Yeah. You know, with all the CLs that you have playing. The Somebody deck. did comment on the Rave Mom video that I should probably play Chimera, and I definitely like Chimera a lot, and I've yeah. kind of thought about it. Um, I think now that I'm focusing more on the Merva, I probably will do that. So that was a great suggestion. And if you guys know me, you know I'm obsessed with Chimera Mon, so I've definitely had the thought. Yeah. But I think it was before I clicked how good the Merva was working, but. Can't wait for I don't that know. gold Chimera Mon yeah. that J Japan just got, the uh, 30 yeah. anniversary one. That That's looks really gonna be cool. Sick. So I think uh, if you guys aren't following Premium Bandai, or if you're not following the Digimon English Facebook page, and you guys all of a sudden have that FOMO missing out on these exclusive sets, yeah. start doing that. Because, I mean, would you rather pay a third of the price, quarter of the price now for some of these alt arts? Or three times the price. You might have time. to order them six months in advance and wait six months like the rest of us do. Right, but that's my experience with that is that it feels like a holiday when they finally show up. When you finally you get like, your your big box of all your premium Bandai stuff that you ordered, yeah, because I mean I'm ordering five of each. Yeah, you order it and then you don't see it for, for six months and six yeah. months, yeah. yeah. And, so and it's, it's kind of nice like, too because they don't put like a hold on your card for six months. Yeah, they charge it right away, so that yeah. way you paid for it. It's out of sight, out of mind. They show up, you don't owe anybody any money. Yeah, and if you just like. This, you know, all four of the five cards that are the exclusives you don't play, you can sell them, recuperate your money. Yeah. You know, typically, typically, typically. right? Or you can if sell, you sell the mats, fast, you can sell yes, the binders. You if you hold on to them, a lot of those cards go down. To the yeah, I, I agree. I agree. But it's like anything else, Digimon. It's only the playable stuff that's worth money. Yeah. So you know? anyways, um, EX4, been really loving the set. House event was super nice. I think I've been enjoying EX4 a little bit more than you because I've been into really, I've been in a blue it's flare a mood. Mon set. You've been I've talking been into about Rave this card Mon. forever. Yeah. Um, the Gallimon stuff is really unique to see what they can do. Now Gallimon is having the issue of too many options and not like clearly defined direction to go yeah. for Gallant. Um, especially with Medieval Duke and a new Chaos Gallant. I think Megidramon fans, so that yeah, would rather play Megidramon. Yeah, it's a huge yeah. family tree of Gallimon stuff that people can play now. So now you can wild. pick which one you want to focus on, which is yeah. really cool. The Alliance was such a cool mechanic. I'm glad Digimon is introducing new mechanics. Do you think they're going too fast, though? Because we have Barrier, and then we have yeah. the other one that we're going to talk about. Indomitable. Indomitable. We're going to talk about that here up. in a sec, too. Well, let's talk about Barrier, because that's coming up next. Yes, right? so Barrier is such an interesting effect, and this is coming out in BT13, right? Yeah, I think so, yeah. Yeah, so... Yeah. We just right. got the Q&A from Bandai, so we can, we can switch to that. We can feel it like we've had a dead period of key words, though. Right, where we didn't really get anything new, because, like... Raid, I think, was probably one of the Raid last was, ones. Raid was... Yeah, like BT10 introduced all the Digicross. Yeah. But like before Digicross, there really wasn't like a lot. Digicross, you know what I'm saying? Raid, and then between now, I think yeah. it was just Alliance was the next one. Alliance, yeah. but before all of that, before Raid and Digicross, what were they? What was the newest mechanic? Mm. There was like nothing. There was something. Yeah, like I, I can't think it? of anything. Like Blocker was already there. Retaliation was already there. Blocker, retaliation. Jamming was already there. Digiburst. Like, Digiburst was BT4. Like, we already had all of these keywords, yeah. and BT10 gave us a bunch. Yeah. And then they kind of have been giving us a little bit more per set, right? I yeah. don't think BT11 had a new keyword. Yeah, per but, se. Yeah. But Barrier, anyways. Oh, Evade. I think Evade. Evade was EX3, right? Yeah. yeah, yeah. So, so EX3. I think Evade was the one before Raid. Or before. I don't know. I think but you're yeah. right. Yeah. Remember, we had a couple. BT10 was evade because the old force has it. You're right. Yeah. You're right. You're right. Yep. So and then DNA yeah. did evolve. That was they yeah. Added that was that BT8. Back in, back in yeah, they've added they added that but a while BTA, ago. BT8. That was the last one that they added. So it's like every other set that you're usually giving. I us. can't think of anything for BT6 or BT5 even. I mean, I guess BT5 uh, had Blitz. Uh, Digiburst was BT4. Digiburst was BT4. So yeah, maybe Blitz. it just seems like because we're so used to them. Yeah. But it, it does feel like they didn't give us a lot of keywords, and now they're just giving us so many. Yeah. They're just right? coming out of... 
I mean, and they're all kind of cool in their own way. Oh, absolutely. Yeah, yeah, absolutely. And I think Bandai realizes that the more keywords they give us, the more new players have to learn, which I think is kind of borderline frustrating for new players um, when you're trying to learn a new game. It's just like a new player jumping into Magic right now. Like, yeah. How many keywords? There's millions of keywords. I get that, but the learning curve is steep, yes, but it's not impossible. No, it, it's definitely possible. You know, and like if, if you have a card game that keeps tailoring to new players, right, yeah. you're not going to have a healthy card game yeah i mean you imagine showing up to ultimate cup and instead of having the powerhouse decks that we have now you're going back to turbo omnimon for bt1 because we're trying to because we're so focused on new players yeah you know what i'm saying so well, let's check out this barrier let's check it out so this is kind of a cool effect i think it's going to be pretty popular at least when it comes out being that it's what yellow based right i think so and i'm really liking that bandai on facebook or digimon is posting these Mm -hmm. so again yeah. guys if you're not on facebook that's fine but for those of you on facebook make sure you're following the digimon english card game version yeah we're not affiliated with them we don't get any sponsorship nothing like that but yeah. it's really nice when you can see all of these things being posted by the official representation right yeah because i mean obviously they've dealt with this in japan and for there are questions quite a few about months. this yeah absolutely i think it'll be really cool in yellow because i mean we'll just talk about what it does uh, so it's kind of another layer of protection kind of like armor purge um essentially but instead of like purging the top card of your stack you actually purge a card out of your security yeah. so it'll be really cool for manipulating your security it's gonna be really cool for uh like yellow or purple kari it's gonna be really gain cool i memory. think with this gain a memory or even like could be good with like if we finally ever get a pulsemon tribal deck put together being able to <laughs> one of these days being able to manipulate your security down to three to I'll get that magic that number more so I think it's really cool. It'll be interesting to see how it works. I yeah. think it'll be I think it'll be fun. I think so too. I think I think so. Barry is a cool idea. Uh I still need to look up the cards that it's on. I'm not sure if yeah. it's gonna if the cards that it's on are gonna be super used because I was so focused on all the Royal Knights. Well, I mean it's um, crazy because this deep into the game, right? And we were just talking about this before we started hitting record, um, is that certain decks are focused on certain tribes. Mm -hmm. Like you're not gonna go out of your way, like back in the one point oh days. Your level fours, especially for Red Omni, were four security attack Greymon, like three to four turbo because you just didn't have any good inheritables. You didn't have tribes. You didn't have yeah. X antibody. You just turboed. And then the rest were blockers, mm -hmm. right? And that's what you did. And now we're at a time where it's so tribal based for all of these decks where every card has multiple purposes, which is good. Yeah. Very nice for deck building. I don't know how you're going to fit in Barrier. I don't you know. know, it's it's gonna unless be tough. you're playing that specific tribe and that specific yeah. deck for a reason. Yeah. Um. I mean, it's kind of like armor purge, right? I mean, because when you look at an armor purge deck, but that's that's, that's what the that's what the deck does is armor purge. There was so. a whole. There's still a deck. There's still decks dedicated. If you haven't seen my Hawkmon armor rush, go watch it. Um, shameless plug there. But there's still decks like the Vmon armor rush. There's even the new armor control stuff coming out because of how good that. Heaven's Judgment or whatever that yellow seven cost option that's dumping mm -hmm. everybody yeah. um, is, right? Where their Armor Purge is still relevant. Yeah. Right? It's so good. But I, I, see, I see Armor Purge being way more relevant than Barrier. Yeah. You know? Uh, but I don't know. I foresee the next one being a lot more usable, which yeah. is the Indomitable. Yes. Don't, let's go into that. Because that one is the one that really, really interested me. Because it's on, so, so far it's an EX5. And we know it's on a green card. Yes. So we don't know if it's going to be exclusive to green or if yes. it's going to be something that is split amongst other colors. But right now, so Indomitable <laughs> is a new one. When this Digimon with Digivolution cards is deleted, you just get to replay it. Yeah. So um, let's talk about why it's an Akilamon and why Akilamon's green. Why Akilamon doesn't say Digivolve for zero on a Hawkmon. Right? Because EX5 is supposed to be the set that has Huang Longmon, yeah. the golden dragon in the center. He governs over the four sovereign Digimon, Azulong, Zakao, Ebunwa, and Baihumon. Okay. Right? So the four Devas. And I think all four of the Devas are going to be ace cards. You think so? Yeah. That, that's, well, that's what I think I saw on the rumors or whatever, is oh, that okay. they're all ace cards. And you use all four in a deck. Or I don't know what the number is going to be of each one. I don't know what the gimmick's going to yeah, be. To yeah, to make that level seven that's going to be Huang Longmon. So going into the set... Before I saw this green Akilamon with this Indomitable, when this Digimon with Digivolution cards is deleted, play this card without playing the cost. That's the effect of what Indomitable does, right? Yeah. 
I didn't know what colors the Huang Long was going to be. I didn't know what colors the Sovereigns were going to be because we've gotten Bai Human in black, Ebon Wong in green, Zakai in red, and Azu Long in blue, and also another Azu Long in blue yellow. Blue and yellow, yeah. Blue yellow. So at first I thought they were going to kind of stay to those colors, but now the Sekilamon, the only thing I can think of is that the Sekilamon is going to become a Zakalmon in green. Interesting. So, because I, I think that's the level four in the Zakalmon line. Mm. Is this a Kilimon or any type of bird or whatever, right? So, is Indomitable going to be focused on EX5, Wong Long? Is that going to be the main deck that's on the pack or whatever? I don't know. I don't oh. know if all of the Sovereigns are going to be green. Uh -huh. um, because of the fact that we started to get little hints at the Dawn and Dust stuff being red and purple. So, now that's taken up that color. Yeah. Right, but green's open yet again. Green is open for whatever they were experimenting with. So I, I don't know. That's that's why how I high of a level it. do you think they put Indomitable on cards? Do you think they'll go up to a level six and have it keep Indomitable, so it just comes back? I think that it would make sense for the Sovereigns to have Indomitable. Okay. Um, and I think that's going to be it for the level sixes. I think it's going to be focused on one deck. Like you're not going to play those. Level sixes in any other decks. Like, I mean, I guess you could, but it's going to be hard to fit in due to the tribe, due to the combo, whatever the deck is going to do when we start seeing those reveals. It's kind of it's right? kind of similar to the Ravemon effect, though. It's similar to the Ravemon where it comes back without sources. But then when it dies without sources, it actually dies. But it comes back instantly. Right. So yeah, what's so it's, interesting it's, is, let's say you have, especially with the Hunter's decks, with the red package, where they can have multiple instances of deleting 4Ks. Mm -hmm. they could have two to three instances of deleting 4Ks, swing when attacking, pop this the first time, deleted sources, it comes back, and then the second when attacking of the 4K would target that because yeah. that happens instantly, and you get to choose the order of your when attacking effects. So it would pop it twice, right? But, I'm, but you know, some most decks don't have that ability to pop more than one thing, right? Yeah. So, you know what I think is funny? Hmm. Is, do you think that you'll see people use this with the X-Antibody option? With the where X they can just give it a option? source again? Well, somebody And then made when a... it dies, it just comes back again, and they could t tuck another X-Antibody? Well, that's a die. great point, because yeah. somebody brought up the point that this is literally what Millenniumon does from BT2. Mm -hmm. But now it's a keyword. Yeah. And the reason why that comes to mind is because I was thinking about the deck I was trying to make where you tuck the X-Antibody underneath Millenniumon. Yeah. When it comes back, just to keep having it come back. And you can do it again. Back. Not yeah. only that, I mean, you could, if you had the right cards in hand, you could choose to Digivolve into a x but uh, if there's a green to level. see five. what the rest of the Indomitable is going to be, yes, yeah. I do think it would be worth exploring the x, x Antibody, Antibody option yeah. for that exact reason. If the or sixes if you got have more, it, yes. If you got more purple-green support, you can put the Skull Gray yeah. and do some so, fun stuff like that. But I, don't, I just don't know what color this is going to be because the Kilomon to me has always been a red Digimon. The Kalmon's always been a red Digimon, so... Is, we're going to have a Zakao in green. Interesting. Right? Red and purple starting to get taken up with all these dawn and dusk reveals, which I'm going to dive deep in here in a sec for sure. Um, but so it's like now green is, is green going to be the primary color for the Huang Long? If so, I'm excited, man. Let's do it. Let's yeah, bring let's it see on. What they do. Yeah. All right. We're going to jump into those crazy tamer level three combo stuff. Yes. All yes. Right. So let's talk about them first. So we are talking about the Digimon dawn and dusk. Um, you're Guys, talking about what are the names? It's Seo and Ka, Ko. Uh, okay, I'm not gonna try it. Is it uh, Ku, Ku and, and Seo? Ku, yeah, Ko and Sayo and, and Sayo and, and Ko. Ko. Yeah. So it's the same set of tamers. So it's dual tamers, just yes, flipped. Yeah. What this is is educate me. Let on me the educate lore. you. Let yeah. me educate you because this game was Spend the me game, a tale. the Digimon game that I would spend hours and hours, and this game raised me to be the man who I am. Dawn and Dusk. Okay, guys. I love these games growing up. Huge fan of them. Huge fan of playing this on my DS. So you would pick your, uh, just like a Pokemon game where the professor would ask you, you're a boy or you're a girl. I apologize if that offends anybody nowadays. I'm not trying to start nothing, but that's how it was. Data game, whatever. So you'd be one, you'd either be the, the male or the female character here. And uh, those were the generic names that they had, unless you typed in your own name, whatever. If you play Digimon Dawn, your starter was the Coronamon. Mm, okay. And it had its own unique Digivolution line where it would go all the way up into Apollomon, one of the Olympus 12. Hey, we talked about that. We talked about that. 
And if you played Dusk, you started with Lunamon, and your level 3 went all the way up to the level 6 of Dianamon in its own unique line. Now, in the games, there was no Grace Novamon, which is the DNA of those two. Oh. So I'm going to call it and say that maybe Grace Nova is going to be the secret, and Huang Long might be the other secret. If, gotcha. Since there's two secrets per these sets. Kind of like how they did the Omnimon and the Gallantmon. That's kind of what I'm EX4. thinking. That's kind of yeah. what I'm thinking the secrets are going to be of this set is going to be Huang Long. And uh, I mean, I mean, I guess Huang Long might be a super since it might be the mascot. I don't know. But I'm guessing Huang Long and Grace Nova to be the secrets of the set. Um, so if you started Dawn, you got Lunamon, et cetera, right? Got it. What's crazy is, is when I heard the rumors that Dawn and Dusk were going to be focused on in EX5. My thought process was, okay, cool. They're going to have separate decks. Yeah. Right? I never once had the thought process of them having a combined deck. But this is a combined deck of red and blue. 100%. This is red and blue tamers that go together. One of them of the red set being a four cost, being the memory setter. Right? Mm -hmm. Start of your turn. If your memory is two or less, set your memory to three. And then on play main by suspending this tamer and picking the top card of your Digimon with the light fling, fang slash night claw. Those were the two um, uh, gangs or um, teams is what you okay. want to call them in the games. So if you played Digimon Dawn, you were part of the light fang crew. If you played Dust, you're part of the night claw crew, whatever. Gotcha. So all of these Digimon that are going to be applicable are going to have that, right? In his Digivolution cards, you may Digivolve one of your Digimon into a Digimon card from your hand without paying the cost. And then the three cost, the blue version, is going to be when, in fact, places the top card of your Digimon in its bottom Digivolution card. By suspending this tamer, gain one memory. Interesting. <coughs> Excuse me. Start of opponent's turn by playing a digi uh, same level Digimon from Digivolution cards. One of Digimon with Nightclaw, Light Fang, Trey without paying the cost. Two of your Digimon may DNA Digivolve into a Digimon into your hand uh, by paying its Digivolution cost. So we're going to see DNA. So we're going to see DNA, which means I'm almost wondering if the level fives are going to be DNA again. And this kind of takes me back to the Imperial Dramon red purple deck. And takes me back we're doing to right the now. Omnimon yeah. deck. So it's going to be how similar is it going to be to that same style? Which means, Jacob, if you're watching, which I don't know if you've been watching these lately, you're going to love this because he grew up on the games just like me. And he loves that this style is his of style. deck. This yeah. is his style. Yeah, the DNA. So if they DNA, it's going to be crazy, but we have this as one deck. And what I really like about this, moving on to the level threes, right, is that they both can digivolve from red or blue level twos for cost of zero. Yeah. Right? They do have, I think, like an inheritable that says digivolve. Let me zoom in on this. By digivolve. Yeah, yeah. yeah. Digivolve onto a light fang nightclaw trait for zero cost. So if there's ever a light fang nightclaw that's not red or blue, it that's will be able to digivolve that for zero. Yeah. But you know, it's all effects that benefit these tamers. This could be fun, man. I think it could be fun with Chimera Mon. Mm -hmm. My, uh, I mean, what I think is cool about this is that we finally get a red blue deck. You yeah. know? Yeah, because, because we got hints of it with the Alter S. Yeah, but, but still, it's a black base. It's a black base deck. It's, a black it's only base. red and blue when you get to the sixes, which yeah, you don't stay sixes for long. You're, you're all, yeah. This is really cool because I think that it opens up your option for options yeah. like crazy. You can either go like, you can do some weird combination if you want to do like Crimson Blaze and Kaiser Nails in the same deck. Like, yeah. how cool is that? Yeah, have some cool uh, um, options that are both red and blue or whatever. But imagine running Ice Wall and Crimson Blaze in the same deck. My goodness, that'd be insane. <laughs> that'd be nasty. I do want to highlight something about this. What I really like about the play style of these tamers in the level threes. And uh, I'm literally taking this from Huang Zero because I watched his little YouTube short um, earlier today about him describing his reaction to this. And he said it perfectly, man. Like, someone who's played this game knows that this is how you played the game. Yeah. You would get your, your guys starting off at low levels and you would digivolve them up and you would digivolve them down. And you would get more potential in the long run where you can max out all of your stats right. on your big boss level six, level seven by digivolving up and down constantly. And all of these cards, the level threes, the level fours benefit you digivolving to a level four, then like stripping away that four, tucking it as the bottom inheritable yeah. and then digivolving again getting to a stronger. different level four. Yeah. So you're getting more and stronger doing this. So I'm curious if the deck is going to be slow. 
Mm -hmm. because it's going to keep doing this back and forth, digivolving instead of just turboing up to a six. Um, so it's going to be very interesting to see what happens or if it's going to be one of those because of the fact that you gain memory of the tamers, you get to DNA for free or whatever, yeah. and you get to play bodies, what's going to happen? It seems like they got it all figured out, but I've been really liking that Bandai did a specifically a good job taking away the fun of the game that I love so much and putting it into card form. Yeah. So this is 100% going to be my deck of EX5, so I'm pumped. Well done, Bandai. Yeah, congrats. Thank you for subscribing. <laughs> All right. Uh, where are we going next, man? Wherever we want to go. I don't know. I think we're out of things that we were talking about. but uh, Well, you're, you're leading. Okay, well, so we talked about EX4, what we think about the set, um, how we're ready to move on to BT13. I'm more BT than ready. BT13 yeah. is what, a couple weeks away at this point? Yeah, yeah. So we stay tuned to the channel. We should be stuff. having... We should be having our case opening sooner than later, which oh is crazy because we, we just did, did one. We just did one. Yeah. So thank you guys for everybody that watched the last case opening. Um, if you haven't already, like, comment, subscribe, and uh, share this with your friends. We definitely want to get this growing. We love doing this podcast episodes. We always have a blast, and yeah. we want to keep talking about things with people, and we want to keep doing more interview series too. So Yeah, I'm super stoked. We got the BT13 stuff. I know we talked about it a, a little bit, Yeah, but... Man, we got some ghost cards we're going to be chasing in that set. We do, set. we do. So, and they're kind of, I don't want to say lackluster, but I know a lot of people are really on the fence about them. I'm okay and one with of the them ghost is your, cards. Your boy, yeah, I'm uh, rave on burst mode. I'm yeah. okay with the ghost cards being lackluster because it makes them cheaper. Yeah, that's true. You know that's what I'm true. saying? Like when you yeah, have these to ones pay... dropped fast. The Alter S dropped really fast. Yeah, yeah. And so did the uh, Zork, Zork defeat. defeat, which I'm excited about. The Zork defeat, I'm, I'm still surprised about because I, I think it's a great looking card, but I guess yeah. it's just because it's not used anymore. It's not used that much. You know, and right, I miss yeah. it, man. I, 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 again, man, such a good fun card in BT5 when it came out, and I want it to be good and want it to be used more, but things are getting power crept out, so, you know, that's just kind of the flow of the game. Yep. Well, you're the man with all the experience with uh, <laughs> in this room with EX4. Yeah. Should we just get into Cards of the Week? Let's do it. Let's okay. do it. Let's so, do Cards of the Week. Um, I'm really glad that we talked about this beforehand. So as, uh, I'm, my Card of the Week is Ravemon. Okay. My Card of the Week is the Ravemon because I have been waiting for... So in Digimon Dawn and Dusk, yes. when I was playing those games, the games that raised me that we talked so much about, I always had Ravemon on my team. Always had Ravemon, you know, I love it. And uh, Digimon Cyber Sleuth, Ravemon Burst Mode on my team. So it was like a dream of mine to get Ravemon in this card game. Yeah. And then get it in purple. And then now it is a crazy cool effect. I like that it they is... split it up between two sets. Yeah. Too. Like you... Yeah. It's, really it's cool. nice when they do a follow-up set like that for sure. But Ravemon's such a cool deck. If you haven't had a chance to play it, play it. It makes you almost makes you fall in love playing the game again yeah. because you are rewarded to build a stack instead of just digi crossing instead of just playing your hunters instead of just hard playing a machine instead Dramon, of just getting which is, up to the eyes mon so you could die and trash yeah, four yeah, trash you, five draw three whatever, so much yeah. purple has been get up to four swing die gain memory draw cards manipulate hard hand, play manipulate a six. trash yeah. yeah yeah so like the rave mon really brings back the fun of digimon mechanics and rewarding tribes by giving us this cool stuff. And the Keenan is an all turns tamer. Very few all turns memory setter tamers. Yeah. I'm a big fan of that. But the Ravemon, the fact that you pop it and then it comes back at the end of the opponent's turn. Yeah. It has jamming. It does so much stuff. The on deletion trashing cards has, has been a blast. Ravemon is my card of the week. I'm so excited about this. I'm finally happy to have it. What's yours? So we're going functionality here because and uniqueness because okay. uh, obviously, like I said, there's not a lot in this set for me. I've been having fun yeah. uh, watching other people like do crazy stuff with these new like enhancing their decks. And so I was looking at this shine gray ruin mode. And oh I know everyone God. knows how strong this card is, but I'm picking it as my card of the week because of how unique that mechanic is oh, and how menacing it is. And yeah. I think that this is definitely a card I'm going to use in future decks when I build like my angels deck or something like it's a really good top end. Because once you get there, it's terrifying. It's terrifying. For your yeah, opponent. Absolutely because it, it just totally limits what they can do out of raising. And I think yeah. the manipulating how a player uh, changes their strategy, you know, when they find out what you have and what you can do with your deck, I think that that is, I think it's fantastic. I think it's a really good card. And just having people be scared to raise, you know, it's like we kind of got a little bit of that with like the Digimon Emperor, right? Yeah. A little bit of that kind of stuff. But this is like literally, okay, if you raise it, it's going to die. So now you need to change what you're doing. Yeah. You so know? for those of you who don't know, 
because I didn't know until somebody pointed it out to me. The Shining Gray Ruin, that minus 5k is to a Digimon that comes out of Raising 2. Yeah, start of main. Which is insane to me. So I, I'm, I kind of want to have a small conversation about this because to me, when I read a card like Venusmon, mm-hmm. when I read a card like Ice Wall, because Ice Wall was the first card that this really came up in, where it was all of your opponent's Digimon gain minus 2 attacking for the turn. Yeah. To me, Digimon and Raising Area cannot be affected by effects. Yeah. So how could you target a Digimon in Raising Area? That's always started me. Shine Gray Ruin, mode, yeah. right? How could you target a Digimon in Raising Area be at minus 5k the moment it comes out of Raising, right? Or Venusmon. Mm-hmm. Same thing with Venusmon. How is the Digimon coming out of Raising? About the blanket effects. The yeah. blanket effects. The blanket effects are so strong in this game. Yeah. And to me, it almost seems like Raising Area could not be affected because that's supposed to be that like safe space where... You know, you're protected. You're not affected by effects. It's impossible to target things in there. And uh, that just overrides it because yep. it comes out. Blanket effect now applies. Yep. And then it happens. So let us know in the comments what you think. If you think Ice Wall is too strong for the blanket effect. If you think Shine Gray Ruin Mode is too strong because uh, I definitely think it's too strong. It's really I strong. definitely think it's too strong. So And let us know what you think about EX3. We want to hear what cards EX4. you think. Or EX4. Let us know what cards you think should be restricted, if any. Yeah. Let us know if you think that cards are, didn't get enough support, tribes that you wish got more. You know, we, we definitely want to hear all about it. Absolutely. Once again, guys, like, comment, subscribe, and uh, yeah, tune in next week. Check out. We have tons of great deck profile videos coming out. Yep. Yep. Uh, we have more Alliance coming. More we Alliance. We have some Gaiomon. We have. Uh, what did we film today? Blue Flare. Blue Flare today? Yeah, Updated all kinds Blue of cool Flare. stuff coming. So With stay tuned a tech to the that I guarantee you won't see coming. All right. Well, check us out, guys. Uh, thanks again for watching. We'll catch you in the next one. Thanks.